Good morning and good afternoon. Bonjour, bon dia to all the journalists joining this press conference on the COVID-19 situation in Africa and scaling up the rollout of vaccines. I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Nicholas Crisp, the Deputy Director General of, the Nation of National Health Insurance at the Department of Health in South Africa. Welcome, Dr. Crisp, and uh, Dr. Hassan Abdul Nasser, the Director of Immunizations at the Ministry of Public Health, Population and Social Affairs in Niger. Bonjour et bienvenue, Dr. Abdul Nasser. They will both speak about the massive efforts that countries are making to ramp up the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. There have now been almost 8 million cases and 196,000 lives lost to COVID-19 in Africa. Although Africa's third wave peaked in July, the decline in new cases is at a glacial pace, far slower than in previous waves. More than 214,000 new cases were reported in the last week. 24 out of 54 African countries, so nearly half, are still reporting high or fast rising case numbers. The epicenter is a moving target, shifting from one sub-region to the next. Cases are rising in West, Central, and East Africa. In this third wave, every hour, 26 Africans die of COVID-19. The pandemic is still raging, and we must not let our guard down. As long as vaccination rates are low, severe illness and deaths risk staying high. Over 143 million vaccine doses have been received in Africa, and 39 million people, less than 3% of Africa's population, are fully vaccinated. That compares to more than 50% in the European Union and the United States. Equally concerning is a continuing inequity in the distribution of doses. Africa accounts for just 2% over the 5 billion of the over 5 billion doses given globally. This percentage, I'm afraid, hasn't shifted in months. It is encouraging, though, that in the past month, almost 21 million doses have arrived on the continent through COVAX. That's equal to the entire four previous months. As WHO, we're working tirelessly to support countries to hit the global target of fully vaccinating 10% of their populations by the end of September. We've just one month to go, and this must be, and this must concentrate our minds in Africa and minds globally. Already, nine African countries have reached this target, so that's very encouraging. Among those are the island nations such as Seychelles and Cabo Verde, countries that have rolled out vaccines strongly from the start, such as Morocco, and countries where the uptake is rapidly increasing, like South Africa. Many of these countries are in the upper middle or high income brackets and have procured vaccines directly from manufacturers as well as receiving various vaccine supplies. For lower income countries that are relying mainly on donations, the situation is more dire. In current, if the current trends hold, 42 of Africa's 54 countries, nearly 80%, are set to miss the September target, I'm afraid. Three more countries, Equatorial Guinea, Comoros, and Sao Tome and Principe, will meet the target at the current pace. I think a couple of other countries as well, like Senegal, Namibia, and Botswana, if these speed up vaccinations, they too could still reach it. I do commend the commitment of national and local authorities, communities, and partners who are working hard to expand the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines across the continent. With concerns about variants and political pressures driving the introduction of booster shots and countries with high vaccination rates expanding their rollouts to reach lower risk groups, our hope for global vaccine equity is once again being challenged. At the same time, African countries must also zero in and drive forward precise plans to rapidly vaccinate the millions of vulnerable people that still face a grave threat. Several countries are moving to vaccinate populations above 18 years and using retired nurses and nursing students, as well as partnering with the private sector to reach targeted populations. Vaccination points are also being expanded for people in hard to reach areas. I encourage more countries to use micro-planning to guide vaccinators 
on where and when to provide vaccination services and to inform communities of how they can access these vaccines. Overall, it's clear that dose sharing arrangements need to continue to be stepped up. Longer term, African countries are putting in place systems and hubs to produce vaccines locally, but to fast track the global recovery from this pandemic, international solidarity remains key. We must also remember that at the end, it is people who are going to decide they are going to be vaccinated. So paying attention to informing and um, encouraging the community, supporting them to get vaccinated is also very important. I look forward very much to our conversation today. I welcome our two panelists again, and thank you for having joined us.